So hello and good evening. This is Ruth Pasuelo from Curval.com and uh, today we're going to talk about a little bit of memory usage. We're going to talk about performance uh, and I'm going to do it with a very specific case I had uh, a while back. And um, I will not show you how to analyze absolutely everything. We will not go through every single scenario, but I will go through a specific one. So hopefully you get inspired about things that you can do to improve the performance of your model. So how about we start? So what I have here is a Google Analytics report. So this report pulls data from Google Analytics and then you can, you know, I, I use it for uh, following, for example, my websites. And um, it was uh, it was a while ago, actually, but uh, the, it was a time there was there came a time that uh, importing data from Google Analytics it just was so slow, it was absolutely hideous, and um, it was no way that uh, it, you know. But Google Analytics you can import a lot of data for sure, and I have here all the data for, this is for curval.com, just this is specific report. And this is data from 2014, I think, up to 2018. No, uh, this is actually, uh, because you see all the blanks is because I haven't refreshed it. Uh, this loading, I think, up to, to 2017, but it doesn't matter. The thing is, uh, it was performing poorly. So what to do? One of the things you can do to improve the performance of your model is to actually see the memory usage of the objects that you have on Power BI. So that would be the tables or the columns or... And in this case, I was interested to see about the size of the columns. Um, hunch, <laughs> you can call it like that. So I've. Um, th this is what we're going to do. We're going to actually... Uh, go and ask Power BI how big are your columns and uh, let's see if we can do something about it. Uh, this is already the improved model. I don't have the other one left and it, it will take me like forever to load it. So you will have to, you will see all the steps and I'll show you why it was performing badly. Um, So as you probably know, y if you're using DAX Studio, you can actually connect this model to DAX Studio and it will give you all kinds of information about sizes and you know table sizes, column sizes, cardinality, you will have absolutely everything you need. Sometimes I think it is easier to have the data in Power BI so I can actually go and see wha what things, what, you know, what columns and it just makes it easier to import the data in Power BI instead of having to export it to Excel or having it in DAX Studio. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to read the column size directly in Power BI. And uh, to do that, I'm going to show you the manual way. There are actually ways to get these automatically, but I mean, this is an ad hoc situation. So I'll show you how to do it manually. And that you need two things, you need to know uh, the port number and the database of the model. I'm not sure if you know what um, analysis services is, uh, but it's basically the, the, the engine. It's not the engine. <laughs> it, it is what makes Power BI work. The, that's a horrible explanation. But every time you create a Power BI file, it creates an analysis services instance in your computer. And uh, what we need to do to be able to see how big our model is, is to query the analysis services instance that was created behind the Power BI. And for that, we need to find it. So always that is stored in here. So you will have C users, your username, and then you will have up, data, local, Microsoft, Power BI desktop, analysis services, workspace. And then the last one that I open is this one. You will see you have by date modify. So if I open that, data, I will find here is the port and here is the database, which is exactly what I need to query. If we go here to, um, ouch, let's do it again. 
we go to get data, we go to analysis services, and this is asking me, okay, um, I need the server, which is the local host, and you have here port text. This is the port number. Paste it. And then we need to know the database name and you will find that there too. It is this one. So we copy it and you need to remove the last, you know, so there's no point until the first point does the database name. And then you have to do an MDX query. Um, and to be able to do this, you have to use this, the, the DMVs. I'm sure you've seen it um, somewhere or you see it when you do Stack Studio that you have these DMVs. And this is basically like ready-made queries for you to get information about your analysis services um, instant. And uh, in this uh, blog post, I'll, I'll, I'll documentation, I'll give you a link, uh, of course, you have here the way to query that. It looks like SQL, it's not SQL. Uh, it says here, um, let me see if I can find what it mentions, catalog name. Here, although DMV syntax query is based on SQL, it does not support the full syntax of a select statement. So join, group by, etc., are not supported. So in case you see that what is to work when you query, it's not working, you know why. <laughs> and this is uh, based on the DMX statement. So you can go here and learn more about it if you, if you need to. But this is, the basic query, so how it should look. And then here we have what we can actually query. These are all the DMVs available for us. Uh, the issue here is always to know, okay, which one should I use and how should I interpret the data? And to be honest, Google, because I, I mean, even if it is here, um, it's not so easy to understand <laughs> what you should use. And once you find what you should use, what you're actually getting, okay? So the one that we're going to use to know the size of our columns is this one, discover storage table columns. And here it says allows the client to determine uh, the columns to storage tables using analysis services, whatever. Just copy it, copy it, and you paste it in there. Remember this is Power Query, so it's case sensitive. You have to have uh, capital letters, okay? So don't, don't write uh, um, with lowercase letters because it won't work. Click OK. It will ask you to um, sign in with your credentials. Is your Windows credentials that you should use? And if you haven't misspelled anything, you will get this table. We go to edit. And in here, we're only going to use the attribute name and the dictionary size. Everything else, we don't want it. So, and this is used once we have that, close and apply. And then let's look at what we get in here. So if we go to attribute name and the size, we can actually change that. So um, there you go. And now we just mark, uh, let's do a bigger 
text size so you can actually see something and uh, have the thousand marker otherwise I find numbers very hard to read so I don't know how much you know about Google Analytics uh, but this is quite interesting uh, data you have to know a little bit on how the Power BI engine or the Power Pivot engine works to be able to make something out of this. But I'm going to, <laughs> to tell you at least one of the tricks now. And what is interesting here, let me show you, is these ones. So is the uh, average page load, the document, uh, load time, interactive time. This is all for to measure the page speed for Google. Okay, so they have these parameters to be able to know how fast your page or your site is loading. And there are uh, quite many, as you can see here, we have a few more. And here there's another one. And all of them are using quite a lot of space. And this is basically, uh, let me show you what I use this. There is a site speed report, and here's where I measure uh, the site speed for a web page. And the um, yeah, re redirection time, domain lookup time, server connection, server response, and those are the times that you were seeing. So how long does it take to load something? So you can see this site is performing horribly uh, for the last half a year, actually. Um, so how does the data look like? Uh, if we go to here and we go to page, 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 site speed, you can see here date, and then here is where it's recording the, the timings for the website. And look how the data looks. As you can see, uh, Google Analytics measures uh, time speed with a high precision. <laughs> and uh, sometimes that is necessary. For example, if you look at how long it takes for the domain name to load, it is normally less than a second. Now they're having quite a lot of trouble here, but normally it's less than a second. And uh, you need to have at least zero point something, perhaps to have this cardinality on the uh, page load is not necessary. So you always have to think about, okay, do I need this level of detail, this level of precision on the data? Maybe you do, maybe you don't. In this case, I had uh, like three years of page speed data loaded. And uh, I mean, this is only what you see in here. It's only three months of data. But when it was the three years, it was like, I don't know, seven million or something. It was huge. And the thing is, measuring page speed, it is fresh data. You don't want, you just want to know, okay, am I doing, for example, like here, you want to know if your speed or your server connection is doing worse than before, absolutely. But other than that, you don't need that much precision. So loading three months of data and reducing the number of decimals will help Power BI. And the question is, why? Well, so Power BI, what it does is it compresses the data. So if it finds numbers that are similar, it will be able to compress them better. When we look at the data, I, I will do a, a video on on the Power Pivot engine. Uh, I just need a little bit more time to prepare it. But if you look at here, because we have so many numbers, so many decimals, the, the compression possibilities for the engine are, you know, minimal. So it's not able to compress this table the way it should. So less decimals already, I would say, from the source. And um, not that many data because this is only fresh data needed. And 
the performance improvements were gigantic. So uh, everything else, I'm going to have full data, no problem at all. So if you're using Google Analytics, just uh, be aware of this. You, perhaps you don't need either all this data. Uh, or perhaps you just need the average uh, per month or something. So you don't need the granularity by day. Um, there's, there are different ways to actually fix the problem once you know what the issue is. Um, but it was very, very clear once I saw uh, the size of these columns and the size of the table. So now we're going on, on the column level, but you can actually measure the size on the table and the size of the page speed table was gigantic, which is now still. Uh, I should definitely lower that too, but uh, yeah. So the, the idea with this video is basically to, to give you an idea of what you can actually do um, to improve the performance of your model. Of course, there are other things you can do and you should do to, to do that, to, to improve the performance if you have uh, performance issues. Uh, it's not always that it's the column size that is an issue. You will have to do some investigation to find out what it is and understand how the engine works a little bit to be able to do some basic performance tuning, I would think. So, so yeah, I think the, this is all for today. It was a short video, but um, hopefully useful, especially if you're using Google Analytics and and you're importing all the data, maybe this will help you get a better performance for uh, for your model. Uh, if you like and enjoy the video, let me know by liking it. If you would like to have a VertiPack um, video, uh, which I, I'm actually planning to do, but uh, if you wanted to have it quicker, just let me know and I'll try to prioritize uh, to do that instead of other videos. Um, if you're new to Power BI, I publish Power BI videos three times a week. Uh, we talk about Power Query, Power BI, and DAX every Friday. So make sure you tune in, subscribe, click the bell to receive notifications when I publish a new video. And I will see you again on Wednesday. So take care. Bye.